So this is a real privilege. Um, uh, coming here to the uh, wastewater treatment facility in Pacifica. And uh, who are you? Um, I'm Dave Grom. I'm the uh, director of wastewater here. Yeah. And you just gave me a, a really interesting tour, but take us through a little bit about why this plant is interesting. Because th this is of the uh, wastewater treatment plants in California. This one has a. This plant's interesting. Um, these components, all these different processes, are a little different than most treatment plants. And um, one of the, the interesting facts about it is it creates products out of both ends. Most treatment plants can't say that. There are some tertiary treatment plants that create reusable water, but they don't create reusable sludge. And in the world of sludge, um, you, uh, most treatment plants have to take it to a, a composting pile someplace, which is usually farmland, and compost it and turn it into fertilizer. So you can't do a composting um, site anywhere here in the peninsula. You will not get it permitted. So that means you've got to truck it out to the valley. So it costs X amount of dollars to take it out there and compost it, and then you've lost possession of it. So now you don't even get the use of it. Yeah. So um, that's kind of the unique fact here, that this treatment plant creates reusable water, which we're working with our water district to put in the infrastructure to reuse it. We currently reuse the water here at the treatment plant for all of our processed water. We go through about 250,000 gallons a day just running all these processes. Wow. So that's 250,000 gallons of fresh water we're saving just running the treatment plant. Wow. And then from that, you know, we're going to water the golf course and highway vegetation and uh, the high school ball field and so on. But it's interesting because you had a few constraints when you're building this plant. One, you're right next to the ocean, so that, that there's a whole bunch of regulation about what you can put out, right? Yes, we're in the coastal zone. So we have an organization, the um, Coastal Commission, the California Coastal Commission that governs us. Anything that we build, if we put up a flagpole, they have, we have to go through the permit process with them. And there's a whole uh, environmental aspect to it. Um, and with that, that triggers all the different agencies, U.S. Wildlife, Fish and Game. Uh, there's all these agencies check in on that permit process and have to give their approval before the Coastal Commission will give their approval. So to build anything in this coastal zone is really hard to do. Yeah. And to build a treatment plant, that, that is amazing uh, to get that through. But yeah, this plant costs what fifty two million dollars? Fifty three million dollars. Fifty three million dollars. To and today it would be almost double that. It would it? be at least double that wow. today. And because of that constraint, you can't use harsh chemicals. You're 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 using very well, few chemicals. Here. Well, we we discharge into the wetlands, which we created, and the wetlands um, is is home to a couple of endangered species, a lot of uh, non-endangered species too. You know, a huge. Um, garter snake population, bird population, and tree frogs, and of course the endangered red-legged frog. Yeah. Um, when we first built this plant, we brought in biologists and they only trapped one red-legged frog. Now we have, we have hundreds of them. Interesting. Um, w one thing, because Rocky and I have been traveling the world and seeing, uh, you know, we were just in China and stuff like that. I wanted to see how, how a modern state-of-the-art plant is running, because you have Solar panels here, which very few plants have, probably. Um, tell me a little bit about those. And, and also, because of the cost of this, can this be applied in places that don't have the financial resources that Pacifica has? Well, actually, as far as cities go, Pacifica doesn't have that much of a tax base. We don't have any big stores. We're not like South San Francisco or Daly City, who has huge industries. Yeah. And so they have a huge tax base. So we're at a disadvantage. We're, we're a little unusual down here. All we have is a bedroom community. You know, wh what's the biggest store we have down here? A Safeway? You know, that's not really going to cut it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so to pull off something like this, it's really a testament to the citizens. Um, their commitment to the environment is, is tremendous. Yeah. And, you know, they, they had a say in this, what type of plant this was going to be and where it was located. One thing that at Fast Company Magazine we're, we're always interested in is how, um, how organizations, how communities can turn green. This treatment plant is, is really the essence of that. Um, you know, like I said, stated earlier, that it doesn't put out waste products, it puts out products. And um, the UV system is a big energy user. But as I was telling you earlier, 
we're keeping a, an eye on a test that's going on right now in California for a new UV system that would use a fraction of the power that, that we use. Yeah. And that's been a really cons a big concern of mine here is that power consumption from that UV system. Yeah. That's where the bit. solar came from. Yeah. Because we, we have a $900,000 a year bill. And so we need to keep attacking that because PG&E is not going to charge less. They're only going to charge more. That's so electricity alone is $900,000 a year. Yes. And half of that goes to the ultraviolet lights that yes. sterilize. We l recently had a engineering firm come in here and they hooked up meters so they can tell exactly what that UV system was using. And it uses about $450,000 a year wow. worth of power. So it's about half the plant's power. So we need to keep attacking it. So that's kind of where the, the solar came from. So we um, added the solar. It produces about 15% of the power that we, uh, we use. One five, 15 percent. Yeah. So which takes a little bite out of that PG and &E thing. And this new UV system, as soon as that gets California approval, we're going to go for that. That'll really put a chunk out. And that'll take about $200,000 away from the bill. Um, these are the kind of projects we need to keep doing to stay ahead of PG&E. Yeah. Take me through the steps, because it, it, you have a lot of uh, interesting steps to clean the, the water as it goes through the mm -hmm. plant. You know, how many steps does it go through? Yeah. Well, it first comes into the plant from the pump stations. Um, once it gets to the plant from the pump stations, it's all gravity thread all the way through and out of the plant, which is kind of unusual. Most plants have effluent pumps, but we built this in such a way where we don't need those pumps. So once it gets here, it's just gravity downhill. And um, it goes through grit removal first to remove any inorganics, any rocks, asphalt, uh, sand, stuff like that. And then it goes on to our biological um, system, which is our SBRs, which stands for sequencing batch reactors. There's organisms in those tanks that are eating the waste. Correct. Right? When the tank is in idle and it's waiting to be fed, um, these organisms, they need exactly what we need. They need water, they need food, and they need air. So we created the environment. We didn't go get these organisms at some weird store. We just built the environment, started the thing up, and they started to grow. Now, at one point in the process, our cameras captured this brown stuff floating in water. That's actually the organisms, right? That's not... Yeah. That was a gravity belt thickener. That's where we're taking a little of the water out of it before we send it into the digester and thicken it up a little bit. But a lot of people look at that brown material, they think that it's waste. It's actually organisms um, because we have to control the population in these tanks. Um, we, do, we do laboratory tests three times a week and we actually calculate out how many pounds of these organisms we have in there. And we have you know, a, a threshold, we know we can't go above that. And so um, then we run a calculation and figure out how many gallons we need to get rid of to, to achieve that steady population. Interesting. So what happens after these, t after it goes through these tanks? What, what, what's the next step? Well, it goes through these tanks. The organisms literally eat every bit of organics in there. And uh, then the mixing pump turns off, the aeration, the blower turns off, and it becomes totally quiescent. And these organisms sink to the bottom. And then there's a clear water on top. And there's these floating, we call them decanters which a valve opens up and it just starts sucking in the water and the decanter stays on top of the water, it floats. So it goes down as the water goes down. And it gets down to 15 feet back to our starting level. The computer senses that, shuts off the valve, and, and it, it's, it puts it in line for the next feeding. Wow. And then, so what happens to the water after that? Is it clean? Is it re ready to dr drink again no, at that no, point? No, no, it's not ready to drink. <laughs> but, um, and it's, it's really not clean enough to, to reuse. It's not tertiary quality yet. So it has to go, it goes across the yard to our sand filters. And our sand filters, this time technology is not cutting edge. It's been around for a long time. It's just a bed of sand. You pour the water over the top of it and it filters through the, through the sand and it traps any particles that might be left in the water, which the water coming out of the end then is tertiary quality, which is reusable. Not for drinking, but for ball fields and golf courses and highway vegetation Very and watering. Cool. And so it gets pumped out or it gets put into the creek right from there, right? Uh, yes. It wow. goes to a well, and then when that well is full, it overflows and runs into the creek. Very cool. 
So we keep that creek flowing all year round. And that used to be, um, it used to dry up at the end of summer every year. And so now the, the creek is flowing full, full time. Yeah. So it supports a lot more life. That's the result of it. So we have a, a, hu you know, a huge number uh, of birds and frogs and, and such. Very cool. Um, what's the coolest part of the plant? Because most people don't want to think of their waste treatment plant and don't want to come over. And, Probably but the, coolest, just, the coolest part is the project we just finished is the ATADs, the digesters. Um, that's just a remarkable system. It's, it's, it's another group of organisms. We, we have to waste organisms off that, that SBR system I just talked about, the population control. And those organisms, it's a very unstable product right then. It's full of organisms. It's also full of all the disease in the city. So we've got to stabilize it. Plus, we want to reduce its volume because the volume could be huge, you know. So we send it off to these digesters. We thicken it up first, and we send it to these digesters. The group of organisms that live in these digesters, they eat those organisms, they reduce the volume, and they create heat. And their, their, their byproduct is heat. And uh, sterilizes any disease-causing organism in there. Wow. And then coming out, we saw it. It, it looks like dirt. Yeah, it comes, it comes into out a truck like a and moist gets dirt. Um, it gets trucked off right now, and it goes to a company called Cinegro, and Cinegro reuses it. They land spread it. They grow, they grow certain crops with it and, and stuff like that. Very cool. So, but, but that's not our end goal. Our goal here is we're just finishing this project. We want to create a track record to prove that we're consistently creating this class A sludge that's reusable, and we need to document that and, and demonstrate that to the EPA. And when we do that, then we can start reusing it ourselves. Tell me a little bit about the technology in the plants. We saw a bunch of cro uh, process control machines, and what do those machines do? And, and uh, this treatment plant is totally PLC based, which means um, um, it's run by computers. And PLC stand for Program Logic Controllers, yeah. and they're industrial computers. And these computers, you can program to do anything you can think of. And they have contacts. You can send those wires off to whatever. You want to open a valve. You want to turn a blower on. You need to gather information. You need to look at pressures. You need to look at flows. You need to look at um, tank levels. It, it looks at all that. Well, it's been quite a, quite a day. It's a fun day and an interesting plant you got here. And um, it's nice to see what, what you're doing to so save the environment. And, uh, yeah, and re so, remove know, costs from our taxpayers' bills. Well, we're doing everything we can. Um, obviously, treating wastewater is not cheap, yeah. but uh, by this new UV, the solar project, the biodiesel project, these are all things that are designed to cut into those bills and to reduce the cost. And we're trying to, you know, hold the line basically in terms of taxes and on this treatment plant. Well, you know, it's really going to get exciting when the water district completes their, their project, and it's going to be ongoing for years because they've got a huge infrastructure to put in. But just to start with, just to, to, to water that golf course, and when they water the golf course, they're going to save X amount of gallons of fresh water. And um, I've heard numbers of high as during the summer using 250,000 gallons a day. Wow. So that could be 250,000 gallons a day saved. This whole plant is about green. When you guys mentioned green, this is what this thing is. Yeah. Um, well, so we're also applying to be a certified green business. We, we have the uh, process going. This is actually the application right here. So at some point here, we will be a certified green business too. So it's definitely a very cool project. It's been a lot of fun working this project. Cool. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. Sure.